The sculptors for this terrace were selected from the third and final Sculpture International Exhibition in 1949. Over 250,000 people came to see the works on exhibition, and there were over 250 different works to see. The event was unbelievably popular and widely covered by the national press. At the time, even Life magazine called it the world's biggest sculpture show. I'm Penny Balkenbach. I'm director of the Fairmount Park Art Association, and I've written a number of books and articles about public art in Philadelphia. The idea with this terrace, the last of the three to be built, wasn't to express a historical period, but rather those inner energies of the nation. This was the perspective of the 1950s, of what made America great. Religion, the sciences, the arts, the worker. I'm Kathleen Foster, the senior curator of American art at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. After World War II, the United States was enriched by a flood of emigrant artists as well as an awareness of international art trends. If you stand in the middle and you face Kelly Drive, you'll see the laborer on your far left. And that was created by the American-born Aaron Ben Shmuel. But the rest of the artists are from abroad. The scientist on the left is by the Armenian artist Korinder Harushian. The poet was created by the Spanish artist Jose de Kraft. And the preacher on the far right is by the German-born sculptor Waldemar Reimisch. In hindsight, the Fairmont Park Art Association might have made different choices, perhaps choosing sculptors that we think of today as more progressive and forward-looking. Well, many great talents from all over the world were overlooked for these commissions. Alberto Giacometti, Constantine Brancusi, Henry Moore, Alexander Calder, David Smith, even Picasso exhibited work at that exhibition. But none of these artists were chosen. Back then, they would have been seen as very radical. Back in the 1950s, what you see here was, in fact, the mainstream style of sculpture. Back then, nobody knew who was going to win in the history of art in the battle between abstraction and more old-fashioned figuration. Even though abstraction was becoming more popular after the Second World War, I think it's fair to say that the Samuel Committee felt ethically bound to represent the wishes of the donor, Ellen Philip Samuel. And so they decided to commission work that maintained the basic human form as a reference. People might have found these sculptures quite reassuring, really, in that they express some of these older values of realism as well as the taste of the modern. You're now on the North Terrace near the bridge. If you want to learn more about the history and the ideas behind the Samuel Memorial, you can walk south to two other terraces because each terrace has a different story to tell.